Okay, here we go again. Uh, welcome to my galley or kitchen, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, my name is Jeff. Uh, I'm doing the I'm doing these videos as a favor for my sister uh, Carol, Carol Kent, who uh, works with the Vermont school districts, uh, oversees uh, several operations, uh, and is instrumental in feeding hundreds and hundreds of uh, Vermont school children. Uh, and working tirelessly during uh, this current uh, coronavirus um, uh, situation. And she thought it'd be nice to do some videos, uh, share it with friends. Uh, I'm new to all this, so uh, I'm, I'm finding it kind of interesting. Uh, maybe you'll find it interesting. Uh, here we go. Uh, we're gonna do a simple pasta dish today. I'm, uh, Basically, it's it's a dish that you could use uh, with any kind of leftover ingredients around the house, whether it's you know roasted chicken or uh, some leftover pot roast. Uh, uh, today, uh, I'm using rigatoni, uh, which is boiling right now, uh, so I wanted to get a little jump start on it. Uh, the cooking time on the package uh, recommends 12 to 13 minutes. Uh, I've set a timer for 10. Uh, reason being is that. Uh, I want to remove the pasta before it's completely cooked and add it to the sauce. Uh, this will allow the pasta to absorb the flavor from the sauce that we're going to make um, and still be al dente when you serve it. Um, the ingredients can vary. Uh, this is not a recipe, this is just a technique, uh, suggestions. Um, I'm starting off with garlic. Uh, and olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I slivered the garlic. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, we're going to put some heat underneath it. We're going to just get it nice and brown, lightly brown. Uh, it's, it's a fine line between uh, burnt and, uh, and lightly toasted. Uh, and you need to keep your eye on it, stir it occasionally, and get an even uh, browning on it. Uh, at that point, we will. Uh, add our remaining ingredients. Essentially what you're doing is you're building layers. Uh, we're taking, we're infusing the garlic flavor into the olive oil. Uh, we'll be adding um, the braising liquid from the veal asabuco that I cooked yesterday, which is this. Uh, I had a little bit of the veal asabuco uh, meat left over. Uh, we also have uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, you could use cherry tomatoes. You could use chopped up beef steaks. You could use canned tomatoes. Um, again, there's no recipe. Uh, nothing set in stone. Uh, I'm learning how to cook while I talk. Something I don't typically do. Not true, I, I talk a lot. Um, as you can see, you know, our garlic is coming along. It's not quite there. And these is, this is all things, I have a lot of garlic in there, as you can see, because I love garlic. Uh, maybe you don't like garlic. You don't even have to use garlic. And again, this is more of a technique uh, and rough guidelines. Yeah, Carl is getting there. This is a critical point. Uh, you don't walk away from it. Uh, other ingredients that are going into our dish today, we have the stock, we have the meat, we have the sun-dried tomatoes, chopped, Ita uh, chopped Italian parsley. I like a little bit of butter in there. It emulsifies in with the sauce, makes it creamy. Again, that, that's something if you're trying to do a lighter, lighter dish, uh, you may not want to do that. Okay. Our, you can see you've got a little bit of color on that. By adding the liquid, that's going to stop that from browning. And again, we're building layers. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. I'm going to add my sun-dried tomatoes. And some black pepper. And we're going to let that go for a little bit. Let it boil. Once it does start boiling, I'm going to add some of the butter. What this does uh, with the boiling 
the stock boiling, it's going to emulsify that butter into the sauce and, and, could, and, uh, and, and give you a, a thicker, creamier consistency. Here we go. Uh, we got a nice boil on it. It's a nice little dab of butter. Uh, I'm doing a full pound of, but, of uh, pasta. This is a large amount. This is going to feed five or six of us. I say us. Uh, we're working on. A, I work on a boat, and uh, you know I got hungry crewmates downstairs. So it's not all the crew is here right now. So this is just a little treat for a few of us. All right, we'll add the meat. And we're about two and a half minutes out from uh, the pasta being to, at a stage where I want to add it to the sauce. Now the braising liquid had been, had been uh, the liquid that I used to cook the asabuco had been seasoned. Uh, it was simply, uh, we took the, the veal shanks, browned them, uh, salt and pepper, browned them in, uh, in a pan. Uh, I added, uh, then I uh, added uh, onions, carrots, and garlic to that. Uh, sauteed that for a little bit. Added, uh, deglazed with uh, good quality red wine. Added chicken stock, bay leaf, uh, rosemary, fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, uh, and parsley. Uh, that uh, covered. We covered the uh, veal shanks. Uh, I put it in a uh, on a pot, as you saw. I don't know if you saw this video yesterday, uh, and just very, very low temperature, very low temperature. Cooked it for four hours, and just let that beef beef get really tender, like you would with a pot roast. Uh, which essentially, veal asabuco is pot roast uh, made with uh, veal shank. Um, so the liquid, and then you know, I removed the shank from that and reserved the liquid. That's what we're using right now. So what you want to do uh, before you go too much farther, and we have a nice consistency on that, uh, with a nice sauce-like consistency to coat the pasta. Taste it. That is beautiful to me. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't need any more salt or pepper. I have added a little bit of pepper to this, but it doesn't need any more salt. We are gonna be adding some Parmesan Reggiano to this as well, uh, which is uh, somewhat salty. So you need to be uh, cautious, uh, aware of that and, and uh, a little bit careful. Okay, noodles are getting there. Again, we season this water very lightly. Ten minutes, uh, uh, I think, is perfect. Uh, I'm going to add this to our sauce right now. Ten minutes. Now we're going to let this cook in the pan for another two minutes. Uh, it's going to absorb absorb that uh, delicious sauce that we made and continue cooking the pasta in the process. After after it has absorbed some of this uh, flavor and this sauce, and keep an eye on the uh, on the on the uh, moisture level, the sauce level. If it gets too dry. You can always uh, thin it out with a little bit of the pasta water. Again, I'm re relatively new to this whole uh, cooking video thing, uh, trying to keep you amused while sitting here just watching pasta cook. I'm going to add 
just a little bit more of the stock. can see that but uh, the pasta has changed color a little bit it's absorbing that brown braising liquid and again I'm going to just give it a little taste test check the check the pasta to see if it's al dente I like the sauce if we need to make any adjustments this would be the time Excuse the French, but it's pretty damn good. Um, now, Parmesan Reggiano, which I love. Add it. Toss, toss, toss. Uh, you may want to use a uh, spatula if you're not comfortable with the tossing aspect of it. Last but not least, Italian parsley, which, as you can see, I love as well. And this is just a simple, a very simple pasta dish. Again, nothing's written in stone here. Use your own imagination. I think the most important part I was trying to get through here is undercooking your pasta, preparing a sauce, however you would like that sauce, and then adding adding the pasta to that sauce uh, while it's while it's at an undercooked stage and allowing the, allowing the pasta to absorb. And, and then you have to eat it immediately. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's still a work in progress. Uh, stay tuned for additional videos. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're working on our style here. Peace and love. Stay safe.